Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. This morning I'm reviewing a book which has come to us from my friend Brian Harris. Now Brian is an expert on Rudyard Kipling and I've been meaning for some time to record this clip and I do apologise to Brian for its late delivery. He wrote this excellent book, The Surprising Mr Kipling, which is an anthology and reassessment of the poetry of Rudyard Kipling. And uh, I found the book really very interesting to read. It's extremely well written and Brian has put a huge amount of effort into it. Now I've given the title for our review a substantial reassessment of Kipling's poetry from his great modern supporter Brian Harris. Now I'll just say a little bit about what I think of, of what Brian's produced in a minute but let's look at the book first. There it is. It's a nice, nice drawing of Rudyard there. It's an anthology and reassessment of the poetry of Rudyard Kipling as mentioned there. Now that's the spine and then at the back there's a little bit of blurb which Brian has written and then there's some nice um, at the back there index of first lines because you probably remember some of Kipling's lines and this is one way of finding them quite quickly. Then you've got after that the select bibliography and then you've got uh, a lot of quotes, uh, a, a lot of examples. There's a nice picture of Rudyard there, being cheer cheerful. There we go. Obviously been reading some of what he wrote probably. <laughs> there we go, there's a nice title there. And then there's a nice little dedication, which I'll just leave you to read there. Because Brian is very, um, very much an expert of, of Rajyard. This is one of a number of reviews I've written. There is uh, the contents section there. And then, again, continued. And then um, this is Kipling's award. Uh, in awarding Kipling the Nobel Prize for Literature, cited a passage from his poems. Um, and in fact, I'm just going to read that. They face, uh, thy face is far from this our war, our call and counter cry. I shall not find thee quick and kind, nor know thee till I die. Enough for me in dreams to see, and touch thy garment's hem. Thy feet have trod so near to God, I may not follow them. And that's to the true romance. Now there's a foreword by Dr Lizzie Welby, which is well worth reading as well. Um, a lot of details, some nice little footnoting just to, to help matters. And then there's a preface which Brian has produced and acknowledgements. And, and Brian produced this in 2014, so I'm a little bit late in doing the review. And acknowledgements there. And a brief life of uh, Rajard, uh, for those who probably just need a bit of a reminder. And then we get into the book itself, and he's got uh, a whole series of nice... Um, uh, nice actual uh, full poems so it's Kipling the poet and then you've actually got he's, he's taken extracts and then you've got one or two of the full poems themselves and you can find what you're looking for I certainly was looking for a couple that I remember from the past and uh, Brian has done I think a very good job and I'm very grateful to him for putting this together. It's his choice as to what he's included and I think he's done a first class job with it. This is what we say anyway. We start by thanking Brian Harris for producing this important literary appreciation for he has lovingly brought together a carefully selected anthology of Rudyard Kipling's works. The book is presented uh, to what is a new audience in the 21st century and so much removed from Kipling's era of course uh, for which contemporary readers uh, will have no links, but only what Rudyard has left behind for us. And in the foreword, Dr Lizzie Welby rightly says that Kipling's art refuses to sink below the waves of contemporary tastes, with much being done in recent decades, rightly, to unshackle the, his legacy as a spokesperson for the, monolith, uh, for the monolithic of empire. There is actually much more depth to Kipling's literary output and that's really what we've got I think with this and the other works that Brian has produced. Welby goes on to offer the view that the complexities of his verse and fiction are being scrutinised under a post-colonial critical microscope which is frankly inevitable for post-colonial generations who see the world so differently. 
and a lot of them have got a big conscience about it, as we all know. Such scrutiny serves to enhance Rudyard's already substantial historic reputation for today's literary critics. And I'm very glad that we're revisiting him because he has a very important place uh, and, and role in, in English literature. And so along comes Kipling expert and lawyer Brian Harris with his own excellent and detailed personal assessment in what is a very special book for him and for us entitled The Surprising Mr Kipling. The book gives the reader a new and modern perspective on uh, Rajyard and it will be a surprise for many readers as well, I hope. The book is indeed a substantial work of scholarship and one which we will treasure because it paints Kipling in, a very, in very much of a new light for his poetic prowess with less of the usual modern debunking uh, approaches which we're so used to uh, from the trendy 1960s onwards. I used to get fed up with seeing it in, when I read English literature because there's just too much of it where in fact there wasn't very much substance to some of the more outrageous statements made. And I think now we're looking at Kipling from a different generation. It probably assists to try and work out what a terrible um, series of events he saw during his lifetime. And I think that, again, makes one understand a little bit more about the man. And in fact, I think we go for, so far as to say that Kipling's um, journalistic uh, background, because I'm a journalist as well as a lawyer, uh, adds substantial creative strength to his status as a substantial poet of his time, surviving the critics, but often sadly overlooked, and he hasn't been by Brian. Now, Brian starts, as he means, to go on, writing that for Kipling's career, praise and disparagement have been his lot in almost equal measure. So why, he says, do we need another anthology? The answer, of course, is an easy one, in that his poems remain household names, memorably retained imagery, possibly stretching back from school days, and Kipling phrases litter our speech today, something which really is a hallmark of a massive literary talent, which is what Rudyard is, certainly to his fans. Just remember Shakespeare, we've just had the 400th anniversary, and people were pointed out how much of Shakespeare's written work now appears in modern day-to-day -day speech and writings. So you can see the opinion forming and the influences which are there, and Rudyard's influences are there. Now let me conclude by saying Brian Harris is to be congratulated for bringing together Kipling's art uh, with an important assessment for the modern literary critic. And this isn't his case, it's done out of love. And we are all the better for this special an uh, anthology, so thank you very much Brian. So have a quick look again at it. A nice picture of Rudyard as a young man there, there we go. And you've got the spine and then you've got the back and then just opening it in the middle um got some rather nice poems healing concept of healing spiritual and physical uh, i don't know whether we want to go there but perhaps uh, it's always the settler there we go nice this is the end of the Boer war you see again as i said before it spreads such a wide area of really difficult conflict anyway thank you brian lovely book and I'm delighted that you've been able to produce it. And good luck to everybody. I hope you all enjoy reading it as much as I did. Thank you. Bye-bye.